Oh, hey! Didn't see you there. It was just finishing calculating the quantum theory of dark matter. But uh, today, a more pressing matter I want to talk to you about is the mousetrap car. They see me rolling, they hating, patrolling and trying to kiss me riding dirty. Trying to kiss me riding dirty. Trying to kiss me riding dirty. Dr. Fernandez here. First, we're going to start by looking at the position time graphs, the acceleration time graph, and the velocity time graph of our car using video analysis and Logger Pro. We sure are, Christopher. All right, so this first graph is a position time graph, and we can see that in uh, the first 2.5 seconds, the car traveled uh, one meter. And it started by moving with a, a quadratic curve as the uh, car accelerated, and then it moved more linear as it moved toward a constant velocity. And the reason it's moving with a displacement that's negative is because it started from the origin and went left. So therefore, it's negative. For the second graph, we're looking at the velocity time. On the y-axis, we have velocity, and on the x-axis, we have the time. For the first about one and a half seconds, the car is accelerating. As you can see, it's a uh, slanted line. And for the rest of the time, through that first meter, it levels out because it has a constant velocity. In this last graph of the acceleration time graph, we see that for the first 1.5 seconds, the car accelerated at 0.24 meters per second squared as the car sped up and gained traction with the ground, and then after that it stayed constant velocity. This is a picture or a video analysis using Logger Pro. This is how we were able to get all of our graphs. Uh, so we were able to use kinematics to uh, determine the acceleration for the first 1.5 seconds of the car. Um, so you can do this in two ways. The first way is by drawing this triangle, where on the bottom is your time, your change in t, um, on the right side is your change in your velocity, and then the slope of that ends up being your acceleration. And then in the middle, which we're not really using right now, um, is your displacement though. Um, so our change in time for this was 1.5 seconds, and our change in velocity was 0.36 meters per second. So when you do uh, slope, which is rise over run, you do 0 0.36 over 1.5 to get an acceleration that equals 0 0.24 meters per second squared. Voila. So the second way to calculate the acceleration is to use the acceleration time graph. It's the y-axis, is the x-axis. So the top of this would be acceleration. This is what you're trying to find. This is your change in time, which we, we already found to be 1.5 seconds. And the middle is your change in velocity, which equals 0.36 meters per second. And it's a rectangle, so you do base times height, which would be 1.5 times A equals 0.36. You divide both sides by 1.5 to get an acceleration of 0 0.24 meters per second squared. Now let's talk about forces in action. This is an example of the free body diagram for the car. The FW is the force of gravity pulling the car to the ground. The FN pointing up is the normal force of the ground pushing back on the car. And the FF is the force of friction of the car's wheels against the ground. All right, so now we're going to look at how to calculate each of the different forces on the free body diagram. We'll start with FW, which is gravity. So the equation for gravity is that FW equals the mass times gravity, which is a constant of 10. So we calculated the mass to be 0.123 kilograms times the gravity of 10. So that gets our FW to equal 1.23. Newtons. And then we can use this right here to calculate our Fn. Because the car is rolling on a flat, um, on a level plane and it's not moving up and down, your Fn and Fw are going to be equal. So Fn is also equal to 1.23 Newtons. Alright, so now that we've uh, calculated the normal force and the force of gravity, we're going to calculate the friction force. 
So we need to look at this in terms of a graph. So the car is moving uh, along the x-axis. So we need to draw what that what that looks like from the friction. There's a force of friction, which moves positive in the uh, x-coordinate, and it doesn't move up at all. So it has nothing in the um, y spot. Um, now this is gonna is going to go ahead and be equal to the mass. Force of friction is equal to the mass times the acceleration on the x-axis. So we've calculated the mass already, which is 0.123, and we've calculated the acceleration as well, which is 0.24. So by using this, we can calculate that the F of friction equals 0 0.2, 0 0.0295 newtons. And that's our answer for the force of friction. And the force of friction is what is uh, colliding with the ground that pushes the car forward. And it's also equal to our net force. All right, folks. Now that we got our force of friction value, we're going to go ahead and show you how to calculate the, uh, step, the coefficient of friction by using the fun equation. And in this, it equals force of friction equals mu fn. And we already know both the FF and the FN values, so we can go ahead and plug those in. So 0 0.0295 equals mu FN, and we calculated FN to be 1.23. So then if we divide 0 0.0295 by 1.23, we get that the coefficient of friction for the mu value is going to be 0 0.024. And there you have it. All right, now we're going to take a look at the impulse on the mouse car. And impulse is the force acting during a period of time, also the change in momentum. So impulse is J equals delta P because it's the change in momentum. And we know that the change in momentum is also M delta V because that. And then so if, if we're trying to calculate this, we can put in the mass of the car, 0.123 kilograms times the change in velocity of 0.36 meters per second. And when we multiply those together, we get our impulse, which is 0 0.044 kilogram meters per second. Hey, sweet thing. Now we're going to talk to you about energy and transformations. And I know all about transformations. All right, so these are the energy bar diagram for the car. Um, it starts out with potential energy, but it is not due to gravity. It's actually due to elastic because it is a spring in the mousetrap that powers the car. Um, and as you can see, work leaves the um, original energy because it escapes as heat as friction when the car has touched the ground. And you're left with the kinetic energy of motion of when the car is uh, still traveling forward. So the total mechanical energy of this is the kinetic plus the potential, and that decreases over time, like I said, because some has lost his work. And it is important to know that it is still conservation of energy because the amount of energy stays the same in the entire system. Some of it is just turned into heat. If we were to try to calculate different energies of the energy bar diagram, we would take this and turn it into an equation. The equation would look like this. P E E minus the work that escapes this, uh, the car equals its kinetic energy. Then we would substitute the equations in for this. The equation for uh, potential energy that is elastic is one half k delta x squared minus work and its force change in the x position equals kinetic energy, which is one-half mv squared. However, in this certain situation, we're not able to actually calculate the values because it is asking for the k and the displacement of the spring. The spring constant is k, and x, uh, delta x squared is the displacement of the spring. This type of spring that we're using is not this type of spring we're accustomed to, so we do not actually um, know these values, so we are not able to actually solve. All right, so the last thing that we are going to calculate is work and power. The work equation equals force times the displacement. And we already calculated that the force was 0 0.0295 newtons 
times a displacement of 0.5 meters while it's accelerating. And that gets a work of 0 0.015 joules. Now, we can go ahead and calculate power. And power equation is equal to work divided by the time. So we just calculated that the work is 0 0.015 five joules divided by a time of 1.5 seconds gets the power power to equal 0 0.0098 watts trying to catch me riding dirty trying to catch me riding dirty trying to catch me riding dirty